that the reality of what doctors say, again, I, I, don't, I deny their authority to supersede God's word. Sean here, when they sent him home two months ago, almost, about that, they said, go home and die. That's what they literally told him. Go home and die. <clears throat> you got to be so careful because when you're feeling like as bad as he was, your body's shutting down, and they tell you to go home and die, you're going to believe it. But our job was to stand in faith so he believed the truth of God's word, and now he's a living, breathing testimony getting better by the day. Amen. I didn't deny what they said. I denied its authority over his life who belongs to God as a son of God. Amen. See, and even now, he's so grateful because when you're sick, it's real easy to listen to somebody telling you how sick you are. And it gets into your spirit, and you start thinking that way like he did. He just told me, I was, I was believing what they said. But well, Melissa, come here. She's been here with us from the beginning. We said, no, he's not going to die. He's going to live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's what you're going to be doing. So there's a plan. I don't deny when doctors tell you something, but you take that to the Word of God. The Bible warns us, do not believe a bad report. Okay, the report is there, but it gets canceled with the blood of Jesus and the stripes that were put on His body cancels their bad report. Your job is to believe how much He loves you and that He wants you healed and whole. But like I said, when He was telling me that, I've been there. I know that because before I got saved, I was sick all the time. I was always on my deathbed. But guess what? I met Jesus. Amen. And he says, no, you're not going to die. You're going to be my testimony of what I do in a person, giving you new kidneys and new liver, new lungs and new heart. He replaced all my organs with new ones. That was over 31 years ago, and I'm still going because I was on my deathbed. My body was shutting down. But guess what? God said, you shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I'm going to make you whole. The doctors can't fix you, but I'm the great physician. Amen? Amen? So it's so important that we realize something. It may look dark, but the light has come. He's the light of life. Amen? Amen. He's our healer. Amen? Amen? So next time somebody gives you a bad report, you call us. We'll pray. We'll straighten that out because it can't go above this. Amen. Psalm 138. His word when we magnify it above His name, it's above everything. Everything Amen. bows to this. Everything. I don't care what name it is. I don't care what infirmity it is. It bows to this. Amen. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The power of God's Word to heal and bring wholeness to us. <laughs> glory to glory. It's our new life in Christ. It's actually a lifestyle every Christian is to be living. Words are very important today. That word glory in the Hebrew is kabod. It is an exercise and display of what constitute the distinctive excellence of the subject to which it is spoken. Thus, in respect to God, His glory is the manifestation of His divine attributes and perfections or such a visible splendor as indicates the possession and the presence of these. The what? A visible splendor. His divine attributes. Ephesians 3.19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you be filled with the fullness of God. The fullness of God. Then it goes on in the next verse, it says, He'll do abundantly, beyond all, the, and exceedingly abundantly, beyond all that you can think or imagine, according to the power that works in you. This power, the Word, is what's healing him and giving him new intestines. It's what gave me new body parts and new organs and new bones that I ruined. The Word did it. The power that's in me healed me. Yes, we stood in prayer and faith for Him. Yes, we did all that. But guess what? He's family. Amen. God doesn't want anybody in His family sick or broken or hurting. He wants us healed and whole and complete with God in Christ. Amen? Amen. So you already have the fullness in you. Watch this. It's even better than that when I say about His attributes. 1 Corinthians 6.19 we are the temple of God. Remember, we're an earthen vessel. But we're His temple, made holy and worthy by the blood of the Lamb, where every one of His divine attributes is in you, because you're, you're filled with Him. 
You're filled with the fullness of all that God is and all that He can do in you. That's why I don't look to the world. I look within to the guy who lives in here. Even when he changed the whole sermon last night at 9.30 at night. No, that's not going to be there tomorrow morning. Okay, then. You've got a different plan. But you know what? I knew why once he did it. Because you're going to see some stuff today, what it takes to have that glory to glory life. And it's so important that we submit ourselves to his divine plan. Not your plans. Your plans will never bear godly glory. It will not because it's all self-centered and not God-centered. Once you become Christ-centered, then His will and His plans can come forth in your life. Amen? Amen? You don't need to go there. One little verse when I talk about this. Watch this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Hello? The heavens declare His glory. What happened to the church? Right. See, you're to declare the work of God in splendor and magic. Like I said, when you're declaring Him, the attributes will manifest in you and through you. The heavens. He said, I can make the rocks cry out if you don't want to. I'll make the rocks praise me. Man, we need to go back to being praising, worshiping believers in Christ Jesus to watch all of His divine attributes. Mm -hmm. His holiness, His righteousness, His power to heal, to provide, to comfort, to teach to bless, to encourage. All that must be done when you're declaring the glory, the kabod of how great He is. We can talk about how great He is for the next thousand years. It won't cover Him. Because there's more to Him than that. We learn so little while we're here on this earth about Him. You're going to learn about Him for eternity. No beginning and no end. And those days are coming quickly. The stuff that's going on in the earth, we need to get about our Father's business and that's telling Him Jesus saves. Don't go out and give them a theological debate and a doctrine of where the church came from and who this was and who that was. Your main focus when you're sharing the gospel is Jesus and what He's finished for all mankind. Don't bring in all these other doctrines and stuff. You're just going to confuse people. All of you have been saved for a while. You know the Lord. But when you're out here dealing with the lost, do not give them a bunch of religion. God came to destroy religion, the works of the Amen. flesh. Do not give them a list of dues. Tell them salvation is a free gift. That the blood of Jesus will wash away your sins forevermore. And when you proclaim His name and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Don't give them anything else. Give them the love of Jesus that He poured out for all mankind when He came to Calvary. When He rose on the third day and conquered sin and death. Give them the real facts of what Jesus has done for us. Amen? Amen. When I say this world is in a lot of trouble, I'm not kidding. Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, His invisible, here's that word again, attributes are clearly seen. Being understood, understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Time's up, church. Time's up for a lot of people right now on this earth. Amen. Even these people devising evil to create dark matter, they're going to get swallowed up in darkness is what they're going to get. You don't mess with God and you don't mess with darkness. Mm -hmm. Even the stuff Sean saw when he was sick, he saw how real the spirit realm is. But now that God has rescued him, and now that he's focused on Jesus, now those things don't come around anymore. Amen. You know why? Because his mind is set on the one who saved him and healed him. Amen. See the difference when your thinking change. You start seeing what he sees. Now you know, you know what? Devil's been defeated. Yeah. Death has been defeated. Death has no sting. There's not a person in here that should ever worry about leaving this earth because you're going straight home. We go straight home. There is no delay in it. You go home. It's that quick. You're in the presence of the Lord. You're swimming in the river of life. And you're worshiping Jesus forevermore. Amen? Amen? So it's so important today that you never fear. But you know what? My wife and I were even talking and praying this morning because it's really heavy on my heart. There's a lot of people on this earth that are about to perish. A lot of very, 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 very wicked people beyond any words that we can describe. Because time's up. God's been sending warnings since the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah. We still haven't learned. They're without excuse. All these people searching for answers. When you look at the universe, all these astrophysicists and all the rest of them, so many of them actually in the last 50, 60 years have come to Christ. Because they tried to prove 
through science that it wasn't all created. And what they found is, oh, there's no way. Somebody had to create this. This just didn't happen. So, but when this end comes for so many people, they're going to die without Jesus. Their eternal damnation is beyond comprehension. Like I said, I've seen the vortex. I've seen the ones that don't know Jesus going down into a pit that gets darker. And I stood there with the Lord and it got darker and darker as they kept going down. And they were all being pulled into the hole. And it's a big vortex. And it sends them to the lower parts of hell. So many people are going to go there. Because God can't even reach them. Because for generation to generation they've been living in darkness. Don't rejoice when it happens. God says in Ezekiel 36, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Because they're dying without him. Do I pray that they come to salvation? Yes. Do I know many of them will not? No, they won't. <coughs> No, they won't. There's a lot of people in our government that go to church buildings and say they're a believer, and yet they murder babies. They're as perverse and ungodly as can be. They're as corrupt as can be. The Speaker of the House, this whole country is in a state of recession and poverty right now like we've never known, and devastation on families. She's at a country club over in Italy, yeah. hanging out on the beach. Where'd you get the money to do that? And this, there's somebody that says they believe in God. You cannot... Preach what she preaches, do what she does, and say you're a child of the king. Because yes. there's no evidence that she's been changed yet. There's no evidence that his divine attributes and perfections are in her. I will not judge her on judgment day. The word will do that, not me. See, I still pray for her salvation, although I know she's consumed with demons. You can see them swimming around in her eyes. So she's just one of thousands of politicians we have that have exalted themselves that will be humbled by a holy God. But I'm telling you, church, keep praying for their salvation because the end is going to come quickly. Amen. Things are speeding up. we got a job to do, and that's to tell people Jesus died for them and He loves them. And He will cast no one away that comes to Him. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the power of the Word, O oh God. Hmm. Verses 7 to 17. When I talk about the two covenants in here, how powerful they are, remember the new covenant has better promises because it's sealed in Jesus' own blood. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we have such a better covenant than the old. And this proves it right here why so many people out there are struggling right now. Because there's a veil over their eyes. They can't see nor hear the truth. But if the ministry of death, look what Paul says, written and engraved on stones, remember that was the law, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance. Well, when you stand in the presence of God like Moses did, he was glorified, amen? But because they were under the law, under the law, which is judgment and condemnation, they couldn't even look at it. They said, cover your face, we can't even look at you. See, the law brings judgment. It brings condemnation, which there is none in Jesus. And it says, the, because the face of the Lord, the glory of His countenance, which glory, what? Was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? See, we have a more glorious life, a more glorious future, because of what Jesus did. That's how you can now live a life glory to glory. They lived it from doing one work after another work after another work just to serve God. The work is finished. He finished all works of the flesh. Now it's the work of the Spirit in you that brings you from glory to glory. Amen? For if the ministry of condemnation, remember Romans 8, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ that don't walk according to the flesh. See, now you're spiritual beings. You walk according to the Spirit. You are never going to be condemned nor judged because of Jesus. See, it's a whole different covenant we're under right now. Have glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. See, we got more glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory and respect because of the glory that exceeds. See, when Paul's talking about the glory, he's talking about the manifestation of our life now. Being manifested because the glory of God's already in you, amen? For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness, 
of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But watch, their minds were blinded. See, you watch people, you watch religious people, they live under the law. All the works of the flesh, all the do's and the don'ts, they got a whole list of stuff to do. That never will get you to heaven. It never gets you saved. It's what Christ has done in you believing in it that gets you saved. Amen? But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted. Watch this in the reading of the Old Testament. A lot of believe, a lot of people that say they're Christians, they spend a lot of time in the Old Testament. You'll see them being the most religious, judgmental people there are, because that's what's under the Old Covenant. Yeah. Judgment, condemnation, and wrath, and works of the flesh. You're set free from it all. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. Remember what happened when he said it is finished? What happened? The veil was torn in two. You have access now to go from glory to glory, living in the presence of a holy God. Amen? Amen. It's so important that you see the veil is taken away. You can approach God with boldness, it says in Hebrews, to receive grace and mercy in a time of need. Amen? Amen. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lays on his heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we will watch with unveiled face, beholding, as is in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Woo! See, the living Word of God that's in you, that's why I say meditate on this day and night. It tells you that in Joshua 1. Tells you that in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Renew your minds, do not be conformed to the world, but meditate on His Word, which is health to your flesh and strength to your bones. The more of this that goes in your eyes and your ears is going to go into your heart. Once your heart and your mind are one with this Word, it will manifest inside of you. We worship God Friday night, Earl's shoulder got healed. Like I said, we didn't even pray for Him. He goes, I couldn't even lift my arm when I got here. He was heading to the doctor's office. All we did was worship. No prayer, no love. We worshiped. The anointing fell in here and healed him without touching him. Because when you worship, his attributes manifest. And one of his attributes is healing. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. By his stripes, we were healed. Amen. See the power of worship now? That's why I tell people, they say, oh, what kind of singing do you do in your ministry? I said, we don't sing. What? I said, we worship. Yeah. We praise the name of Jesus. We lift His name on high. Yes. That's what we do in this house. That's why you see the manifestation of the healings, of bringing people back from the dead. That's why. Like I said, next time you get a bad report, you check in with what the Word of God says about you. Yes, we feel things. Yes, we go through things. Yes. But when you're feeling like He did, it's hard to deny what... You can't deny what they said. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not doing well here. But he had a people that loved him in this house, a wife that loved him, a son that loved him, a ministry that loves him, and Jesus that loved him, standing and praying for him, and now he's healed and whole. He's a miracle. Yeah. Amen? We needed a miracle, not just a healing in here. We got a miracle in Jesus. Amen? Amen. You're a miracle man of God. Hallelujah. I praise God. And that's what he's going to do through you, perform miracles. Because you're living proof oh, of the miracle power of Christ in you. It's so important when I tell you about this right now. It's so important under this. There's no more veil. There's no more separation. It's amazing how many people approach God so timidly. Stop being a wimp. Stop being a wimp. You're priests and kings. You're children of the Most High God. You're soldiers in the army of Christ. Stand upright. Not with arrogance. Not with haughtiness. But be bold with your Father. It's okay to yell and jump up and down once in a while. He'll get over your stuff. <laughs> and you're not intimidating him. You can't intimidate God. You cannot and will not ever. So the next time you lose your cool and you look at heaven and you start yelling, he'll wait till you're done. He'll go, okay, and he'll wait. And once you're done with yourself, he'll go, What's up? And then he'll hug you. And then he'll tell you it's going to be okay. I got this. And then you cry. He might have been purging you of something that you wouldn't yes. let go of. Yes. 
You might have been trying so hard and striving so hard. You were going to do this and you were going to do that. And you were going to fix this and you were going to fix that. Well, Tina, you never have, but it's all good. Okay. So, but do you see what I'm saying, though? A lot of times he's purging you. Approach him with boldness. It tells you to. Stop going to God like you're some kind of limpy little nothing. Your children, your royalty. You got royal garments on. Live that way. Take the authority Christ gave you. And when you approach your Father in the name of Jesus, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. Your word is true in this ministry. And everybody in here is healed and whole in Jesus' name. And I'm not afraid to say that. The power of His Word gives me that authority to speak it and get the results Jesus got because I'm just mm. like Him. Amen. Amen. Friday night, God gave me a word for somebody in here. And I was just sharing with John and Tina, when we speak God's Word, it will be performed, Ezekiel 12, 24, and 28. While I was standing here, Claudia was over there. Luckily, there was two people standing behind her. Because I spoke the Word. It just came up out of my spirit. It knocked her off her feet. Didn't touch her, didn't pray for her. Spoke the word. His word came off my tongue. A prophetic word, and it knocked her right off her feet. Look, they were behind her to catch her, praise God. Amen? So, this is the power of the word of God when spoken in faith in the author of the word. Who is the word? See, i got such faith in that word that when it comes up in my spirit to speak it, it's going to happen. I don't doubt it. They said, well, sometimes it doesn't happen. I said, that's not my fault. My job was to let the Spirit speak a word through me. When it hits the other end, it's between them and Jesus how it comes to fruition or not. So if something happens and you give somebody the word and it doesn't happen, do not be discouraged. Don't blame yourself. A lot of times people reject what God says to them and for them. They do. I've watched it with my own very eyes. I've prayed for people and they've gotten healed. And the next thing you know, they denied what happened. And the next thing you know, it took them. Yeah. They took him. Well, it didn't really happen. No, yes, it did happen. Yes. And it happened before the world began. See, I know his healing happened before God created the universe. It says so. Before the world was formed, I formed you and knew you and formed you in your mother's womb. I wrote your life out in the book of life before I formed the universe. So I knew his plans for sure. I knew his plans for Melissa. I know his plans for Connor. Because God, that's what I stood on. He told me the plan, so I knew he couldn't fail. So when I prayed in faith for him, I knew it would happen. When we just prayed for Earl this morning, little dot on his head, it's already gone in Jesus' name. You know why? Because God said so. What you pray and believe, I will do, says the Lord. I will establish my word in you and on Amen. you and around you, so that my attributes are clearly seen in all the earth. So everyone's without excuse whether they believe or not. Amen? <laughs> now you got me all fired up. <coughs> Now the process of this happening, don't go there, Romans 8, 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the first among many brethren, the firstborn. Remember something. When you got born again, you got put on a potter's wheel. Jeremiah 18. The whole process is for God to form you into the image of his Son, now, he saw you as a son and a daughter the day you got saved. <laughs> but they don't tell you this when you get saved. The process begins of becoming just like Jesus. They don't tell, they don't, nobody told me that. When the trials really started hitting, I went to my pastor, my mentor says, you guys didn't tell me this in the beginning. Where were you a year and a half ago? Well, you weren't ready to hear that yet. You could have warned me. No, you wouldn't have listened. Because you was too happy. I had all this grace on me. I just thought life was just going to be a yellow brick road all the way to heaven. No, there's a process of being made into the image. Now, the day you got saved, from that point on, the Father, remember, this is the magnifying glass, how the Father sees you. He looks down from heaven through the cross at you. He saw you as a finished product. You gotta understand something. The day you got saved, he already sort of formed into the image of his son. But he was gonna put you on the potter's wheel because he's the potter, you're the clay. And now he's molding you until you're totally submitted the way Jesus was. That's the whole process. In John 3:30, it says, He must increase, I must decrease. In John 15:2, it says, He purges us so we bear more fruit. 
You know what the fruit is? His attributes living through us. Getting people saved, getting people healed, mentoring people, discipling people, taking people under, the, under your wings, because you're under His, and making them into better. The, you, it's multiplication. All of you have way too much God in you not to be teaching other people in here. That stack of Bible studies back there, that's not even a tenth of what's been taught in this house. You are spiritually equipped to be mentors and disciples of others in here. Every one of you is. Every one of you is. Don't get quiet on me now. Every one of you is a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Equipped to make disciples of all nations. Amen? Amen. See, and you won't do it on your own because the Holy Ghost does all the work through you. Amen. See, so that purgent thing, he says, that's what he gave me at 5.30. That's to bear more fruit, more of God's glory, the kabod, all his attributes. That is the process of the potter's wheel. When you're made less and he's made more, guess what? His attributes are going to manifest when it's not about you anymore. When it's not about us. When you realize when you got out of bed this morning, you didn't come here for, for, for this ministry. You came here to have an encounter, to learn more about Jesus, to be with your real family. Amen. See, you're my blood bought family. Amen. Yeah. And that's how I see it. That's how important it is that we gather together. It says, do not forsake the assembly of the yeah. brethren. Hebrews 9. Because when you do that, you get weak and you get weary. Because in numbers, there is strength. Even Wednesday night, you know, you need to get here for Bible studies. Deborah did a great Bible study on Wednesday night. Taught me something. There's 25 things in the book of Ephesians that we became when you got saved. I, said, I never counted them. Well, no kidding. Uh, <laughs> so when she said that, I went, I, did, I knew we came a lot in Ephesians. Because when you read the epistles, you really find out who you are. But Paul in epistles, when you meditate on those, you find out really who you are in Christ. Because he really breaks it down, what you became when you got saved. Amen. So it's so important that you go through the process. The process. The image of Christ. This is where it all changed and everything got thrown out yesterday. There's a word he gave me yesterday afternoon. Let's get your dictionary out. I said, oh, here we go. Metamorphosis. What did you hear that? <laughs> Oh, we're shaking them up. It's meddling time. I told you just a little bit, Maria. Just a little. That word means, in the dictionary, and I looked this up on the computer. I went to a biological website about this word. And I found out what really happens. I was reading this. I'm going, oh, they're going to love this, Lord. They're just going to love what this means, what we go through to be like you. Okay, then. It means a change of form, structure or substance, a transformation, a marked or complete change of character. Even Deborah said we've got a lot of characters in here Wednesday night. See, so I got back up. Appearance, condition. Now in biology, when you're talking about animals, as many of you know, like a tadpole goes to a frog. But the one that I studied last night and I meditated on this, was the caterpillar to the butterfly. Yeah. There's so much that goes on, and he actually showed me. When you get born again, you're actually put into a spiritual cocoon for this process to happen. Yeah, don't jump up and down yet. <laughs> In the cocoon where that caterpillar turns into before it becomes a butterfly. It grows new legs. It grows wings. Exoskeleton, that means it forms a whole brand new body. It has like bone structure and stuff now. It went from jelly and little, little feet to a completely different being. No, it's worse. It's worse. <laughs> they get eyes. They no longer, they no longer eat vegetables. They no longer eat the leaves. They drink the nectar from the plants and the fruit. Are you ready? They gain mature reproductive organs. I always save the best for last. 
Inside that cocoon, enzymes start to manifest. As the caterpillar breaks down, now it's a complete cocoon. What's left of the caterpillar, that the larva in there, there's enzymes that break that down and dissolve it. They dissolve everything that it was, and now it forms into a butterfly. Mm -hmm. It dissolves your old nation. Is that Jesus? Yes. <laughs> what did Jesus say? Jesus came on. Okay, amen. Say amen. Praise God. <laughs> That's why I love being here. He what now? Those enzymes, what are you supposed to be when you get born again? Crucified. Paul says, put on the new man. Everything that's old needs to be dissolved by the Holy Ghost of fire when he purges you of you. So you're put in a spiritual cocoon. The problem is too many people don't stay in there long enough to get changed. They, God starts hitting areas to dissolve them. Oh no, I got that. No, you don't. That's why most of us never get the wings to fly. How quiet you got on me today. If you do not stay in the process, you will not fulfill your destiny. You won't. Because you won't have wings as eagles to soar in the spirit. Because you still got too much of you in there. When I, when I was reading this yesterday, and I'm reading this, I'm going, he says, if my children would stay on the wheel in a spiritual cocoon, my enzymes are the Holy Ghost, and I will burn out everything that's of them that I didn't put in them. That hinders them from soaring on the clouds with me and the Holy Ghost. With doing the supernatural things that I've called you to do. Because you still live, you got still of your old body. See, there's nothing left of that caterpillar. Nothing is left. The enzymes literally eat it. And that liquid turns, and then God takes that liquid and forms it into the butterfly. With eyes, with wings, with bones. It changed its eating habits. It didn't eat leaves anymore. It drank nectar from the, from the fruit and from the leaves. A complete transformation into a brand new image. Mm. A guy that crawled on leaves to a butterfly that flies. Amen. Ooh, man, I feel better right now. Mm. So church, you need to decide if you're willing to go through a metamorphosis with God. Yeah, that's what, believe me something, I'm preaching on this, but guess what? He told me last night, your cocoon days aren't over yet. There's still more. I'm, I'm part way out of the cocoon. But there's part of it that's still in there that's still dying. And being dissolved by the Holy Ghost. And you know what? I rejoice in it. I told my wife, I can't believe how patient God has been with me. I would have kicked me to the curb a long time ago. But God did. Praise you, Jesus. He said, you know what? I knew how long it would take to get you here. And I know how long it's going to take before you completely out of that cocoon you're in. And I just left it alone from there because it was just like this peace came on me. The anointing fell down over my head, my body, my arms. And I said, okay, you got this. See, I trust him in the process. If you're not, if you're not willing to go through it, you don't really trust him. And you don't really want to walk with them. If that's serious, I'm sorry, you can't make yourself into the image of the Son of God. Only His Spirit can do that in you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Colossians 1.27 says, You have the hope of glory living in you. It's the living Word in you. And you need to give it permission to work in you. And stop getting ahead of God's plans. If you get too far ahead, that means you got out of that cocoon and, your, and His enzymes didn't dissolve your old self yet because you're still doing it your way. I told you this isn't Burger King. You can't hold the pickles and the mustard. You can't tell them to put on extra lettuce. God doesn't work that way. It's the path of righteousness or it's not the path. It's one or the other. See, that word kabod, his attributes, his divine splendorous, majestic attributes, all that he is living in us and through us is so powerful. But those things are not going to manifest. His divine attributes and perfections will not manifest on a person that didn't go through the process. They will a little bit. But you'll never see the fullness of God living through you to do the great exploits He said He would do unless you allow Him to dissolve your old nature. 
it must be annihilated, dissolved into nothingness. So that the new you is what everybody needs. Nothing of the old. Amen? Amen. Now the reason you go through this proper process is one little scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 1 to 15, just verse 10. It says so much in one little verse. When I tell when I share with you, we've been crucified with Christ, we say it's no more guy who lived, but he who lives. It says, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that what? The life of Christ Jesus may be manifested in our mortal bodies. Glory to glory. The whole process you go through in that cocoon is so his life can be manifested through you. It doesn't say you live through him. A number of times I've heard that from people from the pulpit. Oh man, I praise God, I live my life through Jesus. I'm going, they read the book? He said, well, they read part of it. The part about denying thyself, picking up your cross and come follow me. The part about being crucified with me, being raised as a new person, they've left that out. See, I don't live through him. He lives through me. He lives through me. That's why I have such peace. The things he showed me 31 years ago are now manifesting now. You know why? Because it wasn't time yet. My wife and I were talking about it. She even got such a revelation. God, he says, last night she was on the piano. She goes, and God just told me it's, it's only in his timing can the right things happen. Amen. He says, when we try and make the right things happen, they don't get here. Because he's got a perfect time for all of us. Amen? Amen. He has it all worked out. But it's now to a point where I just thank God he's doing all the living. Because I don't know about the rest of you, but I made a mess for 37 years. I don't know about the rest of you. But when he took over and I let him live, man, I see things. I know things. I see the things of the kingdom. And I see his power inside of me increasing day by day. And now I, get, I'm now I have to be careful in raising my hand sometimes because the power of what I speak just is coming right out of me. It's not because of me, <coughs> but because he lives in me and his life is being manifested through me. Stop trying to live your life through Christ. He wants to live his life through you. And when you give him permission to do that, you'll go through the cocoon process. What he hasn't gotten out of you, he will get out of you because now you really want him to do the living. How do you think after all these years I'm stronger and healthier now than I won when I was 20, 20 years old, 48 years ago? I'm healthy and stronger now than I was then. You know why? Because the Word lives in me. That's how much faith I have in this Word. I'm living proof. He's living proof. He's living proof. The sickness can't have you. And it can't take you. Because my time's not up. His time's not up. Our time is not up. That's why we're here this morning. Amen. Because God's... He needs to finish the process in some of you. Because He so desires the things He's shown you. He wants to do in you and through you. Haven't happened because the process isn't finished yet. Amen. Yeah, amen. So go through the metamorphosis. It's worth it. Yeah, it's been a long journey. I think it's been a long time, but to God it's just a moment in time. He doesn't have a clock. There's no clocks in heaven. You don't have to be anywhere tomorrow morning when you get to heaven because you're already in next morning. The sun never goes down because His glory illuminates eternity. It's awesome up there. The sun don't come up and down nothing. It's just eternal glory. And it's awesome where we're going. But it's not time for us yet. Because too many people don't know because they don't see the manifestation of His attributes through the church. We're supposed to be a living manifestation of the Son of God here. And until you believe that, it's not going to happen. They're going to know God's real when He manifests through me. Yeah. Told you a lot of people avoid me because you get me going on Jesus, I'll let them know how I feel. Like you said, the vegetable fruit department is amazing. They kind of duck when I walk that way now. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to keep preaching it. <clears throat> there's, a, there's an urgency inside of my spirit. Everybody I put in your path, you tell them about me. Those that know me, tell them they better turn back to me. There's too many Christians on this planet 
that have not prepared for his coming. They took their salvation for granted. They walk around like they're okay. Meanwhile, they're so far from God, the only voice they're hearing is darkness. Amen? It's not a judgment, it's a fact. When I talk to people that are born again for 20, 30 years, and I hear how little they know about who they are in Christ, I'm like, where have you been for 25 years that you know so little of who you became? Why do you talk about the devil when Jesus already kicked his keister, disarmed him, and put him beneath your feet? Why are you letting him up off the ground? Genesis, God said, get on your belly and eat dirt. He never gave him permission to get up. People did. Humanity gave him permission to get up and not eat dirt. Ooh, that guy just, that was good preaching. That was good preaching. <laughs> when I talk about why you're here, and that Kabod living glory to glory, the manifestation of his splendorous wonders of tribute, which is everything he is, is what he wants to do through you. When you read the Gospels and you see all that Jesus did, that's supposed to be your life. Yeah. Are you not one with God in Christ? John 17. Yeah. Hey. Too many ambulances, too many police, too many accidents. Father, just pray the blood of Jesus over this valley. Hallelujah. John 14, just verses 12 to 14. This is what our life is supposed to be here on earth. This is, when he says, I want my will done here on earth as it is in heaven. What's his will here? That everyone be saved, healed, and whole, and complete with God in Christ. That's God's will. It's really simple. And it's up to you to get it done. Amen. See, he did all the work he's going to do. Now his work is done through you by his Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Try, stop trying to conquer the world and go out and conquer people and everything else. God's already done that for you. Amen. You're just enforcing the victory that Christ accomplished so his Spirit can manifest his attributes through you. You have to get to the point where you see yourself strictly mm -hmm. as a temple building. Yes. And that inside this temple is all that God is. Yes. And when you can spiritually see that with your spiritual eyes, then he'll manifest in yes. here. And then he's, his attributes are going to come out of you. Mm -hmm. Everywhere that you go. Like I said, look at the beginning of the church in the book of Acts. People chased down the original apostles to get healed, to get whole, to get the word of the Lord, to get saved. They chased them down. Thousands a day got saved. They didn't have a TV. They didn't have microphones. They didn't have a video camera. They didn't have an iPad. They didn't even have the scriptures. It was all by word of mouth. The scrolls were all kept in the temples. So they were going by word of mouth. Because the originals, they, they saw Jesus. And they were with people that saw Jesus. So the word spread by speaking everywhere they went all the great works that Christ had done. Amen? Amen. See, we need to go back to talking about Jesus everywhere we go. Yeah. Some people aren't going to like you much. And you know what? They just got convicted. Like, it, like I said, I didn't care what people thought of me before I got saved. I sure don't care now. Because I know to whom I belong. I know who I represent. And I ask for the grace of God to do it right every day. Do I do it perfect? No. And anybody says they, they do, guess what? You're lying to yourself and you're lying to God. Amen. There's only one that's perfect. His name is Jesus. It ends there. You will get perfected when you get home. There's two days that you got glorified. There's two times. One when you got born again. You got raised from the dead. You're a new creation. The second one is when you get glorified when you get home. Because now you already have the glory in you. You're not going to the glory. It's already came. It came. The glory came. He's glorified. Now, if He's living in you, you've got a glorified Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Amen? So that's what God's waiting for. People that say, I want your glory to manifest through me. Amen. I want to go glory to glory as your attributes come out of me and change this whole world. Oh, man. Church, it's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Give him Jesus. Amen. John 14, 12 and 14. When Jesus says most assuredly, he's telling us to pay attention. When he says assuredly, that means it's absolute. It's non-negotiable. It's a fact. It's an infallible fact when Jesus said assuredly. That means he's put a stamp of approval on it and it will happen. I say to you, he who believes in me, 
the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now he's talking about the works of Christ, his attributes, to save, to heal, to cast out demons. And what is that? The Great Commission is living glory to glory. You'll pray in new tongues, you'll cast out demons, you'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. There's never a maybe in the Bible. See, that's the glory to glory life we're all to be leading. That's why I said I already know her anointing, and, and now I know Sean's, and I know Connor's. So guess what? Now you've got a whole family of ministry. So they're going to be a living testimony of how great God is, and they're going to go glory to glory. Like I said, He doesn't heal us so that we go around and just keep it to ourselves. See, that's what you'll give back out. The power that healed you. That's what you're going to lay hands on people. The power is going to come back out of you like it comes out of me, like it comes out of your wife. Your hands will start getting hot soon, too. When they get hot, you're not sick. That's just God coming up and He's showing you what's coming. He'll show you what's coming, but it won't happen yet. He's restoring you completely first. Remember something. Go through the process first. Don't get ahead of God's plans. Yeah. It's all coming to pass. So just Amen. trust in God and watch what happens. All of you in here have Jehovah Rapha living in you. Amen. Amen. And when He promises you to be whole, spirit, soul, heart, mind, and body complete with God in Christ, that means that's a Jehovah Shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Completely restored to oneness with God. Amen. Adam and Eve threw it away. You got it back through Jesus because the veil's been torn in two. Amen. Now you have access to the Father. Why do you think we can come in here and lift up holy hands and say, Abba Father? Abba Father. You know why we can say that? Because Jesus tore the veil. There's no separation between you and the throne of glory any longer. So desire today to go glory to glory in your life. That's the Great Commission. Mark 16, Matthew 28. You're not even the ones doing it. It's He who lives in you. The power that's in you. The life of Christ does all the work. Stop thinking you've got to do a lot. you just got to be obedient and give permission to the Holy One of Israel, the heavens and all the earth, who made you, created you, and saved you, who lives in you, to do all the great exploits and great works. Amen? Amen. Trust in His life in you to do it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 14 in the Amplified. He had me finish with this in one other little scripture. The Amplified in this verse, this is what glory to glory looks like till we go home. I got this at what, 10 o'clock last night. In the Amplified in Proverbs 4.18, it says, but the path, that's that highway of holiness, Isaiah 35 8. Of the watch, the uncompromisingly just and righteous. That's who you are. You've been made as righteous as Jesus, amen? Yeah. He became your sin, so you become His righteousness. Like the light of dawn that shines more and more brighter and clearer until it reaches its full strength and in glory. Oh, Jesus. The perfect to be prepared day. That's the day you go home. Even the Word says you're going to go glory to glory. It's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter for you out here. Amen. So many naysayers, all oh, the days are dark. I see nothing but sunshine. I see sunshine out there. I see blue sky. You know why? Because God said my days are going to get brighter. God says, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. See, so I don't listen to their reports. Yeah, I know what's going on. Read Matthew 24. It's the only chapter you've got to read. You'll see what's going on on the earth. It's all in one chapter. What's going on today? It's in there. And what's happening. And what people have turned into. Yes. Then read Timothy. How people lovers themselves, lovers of pleasure, not lovers of God anymore. When I say your path is going to get brighter and brighter, living glory to glory, in Matthew 5, everybody knows this scripture. You're the salt of the earth, but in 14 to 16, it's so important that you see what you became when you were saved. And I'm telling you, unless you go through the process, your light's not going to shine. Because it's been dimmed by what you used to be, because you didn't let used to be get dissolved by the Holy Ghost of fire. Remember what that butterfly became, became a butterfly, it was in a cocoon, and it was dissolved by enzymes that dissolved it until it was made... You talk, and how somebody could say, that just happened? Yeah. 
everybody is without excuse. When I sat there meditating on that last night, I go, how do people say this came in a bang? He said, leave it alone. I've been screaming from heaven for thousands of years for people to change, and they won't. They want to prove they're right. No, this is right. This is, infall this is the only infallible truth there is on the whole planet, right here. Amen. They've been trying to take this down since it was written. Let me tell you something. It says in Timothy, this word cannot be changed up. Amen. Amen. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are. You're not going to become. Hello? Yeah. You are. We are. Amen. The light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The good works is God's works that He manifests through you, His attributes. See, that's that glory to glory life that we're to have here. We, we have a chance to have the most exciting life. You look at people, they're all bored. You know why? They don't know Jesus. They think a Christian life is boring. I thought it was going to be too. Boy, did I have a lot to learn. I'm telling you, I had a picture of the Christian life the day I gave my heart to Jesus. Oh my, I had these beautiful little pictures of how it was going to be. Yeah. But guess what? No such thing. It's a war. You're in a war. You're in a battle. But you know what? I don't fight from a hoping for a victory. I have it. I have the victory in Christ. That's how I deal with darkness. It comes. It comes all the time. You end. It's what a fly swat swatter is for. Like when a wife lets one in the house. I didn't blame her for that. Oh, yeah. oh, she laughs at me. She just laughs at me. After 21 years of marriage, she just laughs. She goes back to the piano. But that's how you should treat the devil when he comes barking. He only has lies, church. He only has lies. And the lies almost took this man's life. But God's truth took care of it. Amen. God's God. truth took care of it. We stand on the Word of God. Our foundation is rock solid. Because the rock can't be moved. It's the chief cornerstone. It's God Himself. We have a foundation that can never be brought down, can never be shaken. And when you believe that, nothing will move you. So when the lies come, the attacks come, you take out your fly swatter, which is the Word of God, and say, thus it is written, smack. That's how much authority you have if you realized it. Satan could come up to that door. He dare not. He dare not. Thank you, Jesus. Because we would punish him. Yes. This is holy ground. Amen. This is a holy sanctuary. Amen. And I know he's lost. Thank you, Jesus. Does he come for me? Of course he does. You know what? If I wasn't getting attacked on and off on a regular basis, I'd think I was walking with the devil. Yeah. I'm sorry, if you're not you're not going through some things in your journey with Jesus, you're probably agreeing with the darkness that's out there. But seeing that I don't, it's always evident, it's around, but it doesn't bother me any. Just like watching that thing last night, a lot of people, oh my God, the end's coming, they're going to blow up the world. No, they're not. <laughs> the end doesn't come by the hand of man, but by the hand of God. So always remember something, all the naysayers out there, my future's bright. I don't know about the rest of you. The Bible just told me my future's going to get brighter and brighter. I won't listen to anything else. If it's contrary to the Word of God, take that thought captive, you cast it down, and don't pay no attention to it. Amen. If it isn't a blessing, it didn't come from God. If it's any kind of judgment or curse or anything else, it didn't come from God. Proverbs says no curse against you can alight because your children are the most high. He lost his power to curse you. Read Numbers 23. What God has blessed, no man can curse, and you are blessed and highly favored in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing can curse you, nothing can take you. We belong to the King. Boy, am I preaching myself out Amen. Well, I could be up here for hours today. I left about two hours sitting on the desk, so. But you know what? Like me, you get hungry once in a while. So we do eat. <laughs> One necessary. Thank you, brother. I'll figure it out one day. There was a different way I watched it online to roll it up different.
I'll pull up the video again. Um, today, church, when God said that about the metamorphosis process that you're in, and that if you don't finish it, you will never have the richness of your walk you can have. And what I mean is that deeper intimacy with Jesus. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain when you allow His enzyme, which is the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, to completely dissolve what's old in you, your old wrong thinking about yourself. We're in a society now where everything's me, myself, and I, everybody's taking selfies. I want to see the face of Jesus. I mean, He smiles on me. He made me. And my wife says, I'm cute and cuddly. But you know what? I made His image and likeness, and so are all of you. Now stop picking on yourself and putting yourself down. God has never judged any of us. Well, we wouldn't be here today. He has the right to. That woman caught adultery. He should have said, yeah, go ahead and stone her. It's under the law. But he came to destroy judgment and condemnation. So there's none in your life. And you should never think it. So today you choose today if you want to finish the metamorphosis that God wants to take you through and allowing the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to really burn out what was old so you're really free from yourself. Yes. Your old thinking, your old thought process. You've judged yourself. You've put yourself yes. down. We're not qualified to do that. We're not even qualified to judge the sinner that has fallen from God's grace. Judge their sin, but you know, don't be judging people. I didn't find that in the book. They're going to stand before the living Word of God. Not me. I'm barely saved, the Bible says. Well, I gotta allow that process. Bless you. We gotta allow the process, church. I'm telling you something. If you make a commitment, say, God, I want to finish that cocoon process that I'm in. I really want to. I want to be that vessel that's completely brand new. Nothing of the old left. Dissolve what is old of me so my thoughts and my heart become one with your thoughts of me and your heart how it's geared towards me. God loved you before He made you. He knew He was going to come and die for you before the world began. What kind of love is that? Do we really know? We just have to know it in our heart. But I'm telling you, today's the day that you get a chance to say, Lord, I want to finish. I want to see your attributes living through me, your divine attributes, the kabod, the glory of God, so I can go from glory to glory as my future and my lamp get brighter and brighter so people see me as a beacon of hope and light on this earth. But it's up to us to make a commitment to that. But I can tell you it's worth going through it. 31 years, I'm finally getting to a better place. I'm going more deeper with God than I've ever gone before. It's not because of me, because I know there's nothing else. I know nothing else satisfies my soul. I was telling my wife coming in this morning, all these people, none of these people out here that are unsaved and don't know Jesus can sing, all is well with my soul. No, they can't. Because it's not. Because their soul belongs to darkness. So there is no peace. So today you get a chance. You get a chance to say, God, I want to finish the process. So I'm really free from me. Remember, your enemy's been defeated. Our worst enemy is self. How we see ourselves. Read Deborah's Bible study. See who you became in the six chapters. 25 different verses. Who you became in Christ on Wednesday night. It was awesome. Yes, saying to all of you today and all you watching online, I am the Lord thy God. I've never judged you. I don't even find fault with you. How can you do that to yourself? When you gave your heart to me, saith the Lord, I made you brand new. You've been washed in my blood. You are sealed with my Holy Spirit. You are mine. I see you as holy and flawless. I see my perfect work in you being completed. 
Now allow me this day, saith the Lord, to finish the process. What made that caterpillar into a butterfly? You are so much more beautiful in my eyes, saith the Lord. You are the only ones created in my image and my likeness. So that I could come, my Father and I and the Spirit make our home in you. And that our holy, majestic attributes will be manifested in you and through you. If you allow me to finish the process of eliminating what is old, your thinking of self is terrible, saith the Lord. For I never said those things to you. The devil has. Let me erase those thoughts, that low self-esteem. Let my work of purification, the regeneration of the washing of the word going through your heart, mind, and soul this day, finish the process. You are not free yet, saith the Lord. Only I can do that work. Only I can take a caterpillar and dissolve it and make it into a butterfly. I can do the same for you this day, saith the Lord. Now trust in me and watch me do a mighty work with you this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.